well. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for all of your likes and shares and questions that you send to us. Your input is so valuable to us. Hey, if you find a particular breakfast helpful, please feel free to share it with others so that maybe they can have a solid breakfast with you every day. Today, we are looking at a very important symbol, but it is one that may make you uncomfortable. My intention is not to make you cringe, but to help you appreciate the story that God is telling us through symbols. You've probably heard about sex symbols. Well, today we are talking about something you probably haven't heard much about, the symbol of sex. Paul writes to the Corinthians, don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? For the scriptures say the two are united into one. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. I won't have time to go into great detail about this symbol, but I hope to in a sermon series later this year. So stick around. But let me ask you this question. Why does God care so much about sex? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Why does God care about this one act that humans seem obsessed with? Did you know that in almost every sin list in the New Testament, Sex is mentioned, and usually first. Why? In our world that seems preoccupied with all things sexual, why does the Bible seem to be so out of date and prudish? Is the Bible in desperate need of an upgrade? Many in churches today believe we need a gospel 2.0 to keep up with the times. If you grew up in Christian circles, you might have been taught that God cares about sex because he doesn't want you to get a disease or he doesn't want you to get pregnant or that it affects you emotionally. All of this is true, but I do not believe this is why God primarily cares about sex. I think that all misses the mark. Without going into great detail, sex is powerfully symbolic. Marriage itself is also symbolic, and I will get to that later this week. Sex is the most intimate thing two humans can do. It involves us physically, emotionally, spiritually, and psychologically. Everything we are is involved in the act of sex, which makes it a powerful symbol indeed. But what is it symbolic of? Paul here says that we are not to engage in casual sex because there is nothing casual about sex. Sex is to be used in a covenant marriage. It is an expression of an exclusive covenant. All of me for all of you. Casual sex is, therefore, essentially a lie. Casual sex just says, I can use you without committing to you. Sex is symbolic of the exclusivity of covenant, where only one man and one woman are physically designed for each other in the sexual embrace. Sex is symbolic of our future. What I mean is this. We are designed for intimacy with God. The ecstasy of sex is to remind us that we are indeed made for ecstasy but not ultimately with another human. We are made to enjoy God in intimacy, in exclusivity, in ecstasy, in covenant forever. This is why any use of sex outside a covenant relationship between one man and one woman is telling a lie. You are using your body to send deceptive messages. Any other use of this powerful symbol is not the story God is telling. And sex outside God's parameters actually directs people away from their ultimate purpose, to know and enjoy Him forever. Of all the symbols we are looking at in this series, this is certainly one of the most powerful and the most often abused. In a sense, the problem with sex in our world is not that most people think about sex too much, 
but rather they don't think about it enough. It is not that most value it too much, it is they don't value it enough. Since symbols always turn us towards something greater, we can know this. The best sex you could ever have could never begin to compare to the rapturous joy you will experience in the presence of God himself. Sex was invented not to become a God, but to direct our ultimate desire to God. Let's pray. Our Father, may we remember that sex is sacred and it is not to be used casually. I pray for the many who are listening who have used sex as less than was intended. Would you forgive them? And if they are dealing with shame, would you remind them that in Christ, everyone is made new? For those who are disregarding your instructions regarding this powerful symbol right now, would you open their eyes to the damage they are doing to themselves and to their partner, as well as the pain they are bringing to you? Help them to see the lie they are telling with their body and how that lie directs them and others away from you. Help us all to treat this symbol with the respect it deserves. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a great day.